last page. Intangibles with indefinite life other than goodwill, so trademarks, for example, should be tested annually or more frequently if necessary, are recorded at the lower of book value or fair value, so basically the same way that um, IFRS does all of their assets. They, this is what we do for just our intangible assets. They don't have the two-step process. So here it's a one-step process. Recognize an impairment loss if the fair value is low in the book value, but here in the U.S. you can't recoup losses like you could in International rules. All right, our last topic: goodwill impairment. So, goodwill, first of all, is created one time. When is goodwill created? When you buy a company. When you buy a company, and you pay more than what it's worth. You pay more than the stuff you're getting. It's a very technical term. Stuff you're getting. Okay. So that's the basic idea. So if, if you pay $100 million for a firm and the, fair, and the net fair value of assets that you're acquiring are only worth $70 million, you pay $30 million for something. We don't know what it is. It's uh, good reputation, good management, good employees, good training, whatever. You bought something. And we're going to call that goodwill. It's an asset that goes on your balance sheet for $30 million. The difference between uh, what you paid and uh, the fair value of what you've got. That stays on your books forever, except if two things happen. You impair it, which we'll do an impairment test in a second, or you sell the company, or this, a segment of your company that includes um, the, that goodwill value. All right, so goodwill impairment. Um, goodwill should not be advertised, but instead should be tested for impairment on an annual basis. And I guess I'll mention one other thing before we actually jump into this, is that a change was made two years ago, I think it was two years ago, uh, with regard to goodwill. Uh, prior to that, you had to test, you had to do the entire impair impairment test every year for all your goodwill. Two years ago, um, they changed it slightly, and they basically said if there's no qualitative, in other words, not numbers, if there's no um, obvious changes to what's happening, you don't have to test every year. You can avoid having to do this every year, because this is actually a ton of work for a company to do an impairment test for goodwill. You'll see in a second what the information they have to figure out. Um, and so there are cases where firms don't have to do it every single year. They can do a qualitative test, and if that's okay, they don't have to go to the quantitative test, which is what we're gonna describe in just a second. That's just changed um, not too long ago. All right, so this is the way we do the impairment test. It is a two-step process, very similar to um, the uh, tangible assets in that it's a two-step process, but the similarities in there. Um, two-step process. Step number one, we're going to compare the fair market value of the reported unit with its net book value. Okay, so we need to define these things. Fair market value of the reporting unit. In other words, the, you have to keep track of, let's say we buy this other company, it's now part of our company, and it's been part of our company for 10 years, we still have to keep track of it separately from the rest of our company so we can estimate what we think we could sell it for, that same company that we purchased previously. So we have to be able to come up with a fair market value of the reporting unit, this thing that we purchased. <coughs> this is not an easy thing to do. Uh, the next thing we need is its book value. Um, so the book value of all the stuff we got when we bought it, including Goodwill, that's going to be the net book value of the reporting unit. If the fair value is less than the book value, then there is the possibility that Goodwill is impaired, so move on to step number two. Even if the fair value is less than the book value, you don't always, you don't always impair Goodwill, but you might have to. If the book value is greater than the fair value, you're done. You don't have to go any farther. There's no impairment. Okay, so step number one is just telling you, is there the possibility of an impairment? And if the book value is greater, then you're done. There is no, you do not have to impair. If the fair value is less than the book value, then yes, you'll have to go to step number two to see if there is an impairment. Step number two, you estimate what's called the implied value of goodwill. And we'll talk about how to do that right now. Here in a second, uh, if the carrying amount of the reported unit of goodwill is greater than the implied value, an impaired, impairment loss is recognized. Or in other words, 
you have goodwill as an asset on your books. That is the carrying amount of the reporting unit goodwill. If this number is bigger than what this implied value that we're going to figure out, then we have an impairment and we're going to mark it down to the implied value. If the reporting unit goodwill is smaller than the implied value of goodwill, we still don't have an impairment, we don't do anything. Okay? You guys are really looking excited about this. All right. The implied value of goodwill. Um, I'm going to read through this, but I'm going to warn you that it's going to make more sense when I say it in my own words. To f you figure out the fair value of all tangible and intangible net assets except goodwill associated with the firm. The implied value of goodwill is the fair market value of the reporting unit minus the fair value of its net assets. All right, I'll, I'll say this in my own words. In other words, let's say that we keep track of this segment of this company that we purchased previously, and we can figure out how much we can sell the entire segment for to somebody else. Let's say we can sell the entire segment to someone for $10 million. Okay, that's the number. We think we can sell this thing for $10 million. The second number we need is, instead of selling the entire segment to somebody, what if we took the building that this company has and sold it to George, and we took the inventory that they have and sell it to Sally, which make up weird names. Um, and, we, and we sell all of the individual assets to whoever wants them. And then we pay off all the liabilities. What are we going to have left? That is known as the, uh, where is it? The fair value of net assets. In other words, if you sell the whole company, then you get the reputation and the location and the good management and the employees. If you just sell off all the assets, you don't get that. So we had to figure out how much can we sell the entire company for and how much can we just sell off their stuff for. The difference between those two numbers is the implied value of goodwill. That sort of makes sense? So sell off the whole company with whatever the goodwill stuff is. That's one number. Sell off everything individually to whoever wants it without the goodwill. The difference between those two values is the implied value of goodwill. We take that, we compare that to the reporting unit goodwill, in other words, the amount we have on our balance sheet. If the implied value is bigger, then we don't have to do anything. If the implied value is less, we impair it from the book value of the goodwill down to the implied value, and that's going to be our impairment. Isn't that contradictory to like conservative? No, this is this is pretty conservative still. We're never marking stuff up. We're only going one way down. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And um, goodwill is to find the implied value. The goodwill is basically finding goodwill in another situation where you. So goodwill is created net, when you buy a company. Right. So and, and basically we're estimating more, what we think it's still worth. Right. That goodwill. So can can you at least get a glimpse of how hard this is to do? You have to estimate how much you think you can sell this company. Good luck estimating that. And then you also have to keep track of all the assets associated with this company and figure out the fair value of each of those individually. Good good luck with all that. And then you get a difference between that. That's a bunch of work. And so if firms can avoid having to do that, they would prefer that. Um, and so that's why they, they don't make you do it every year anymore that they used to do. Uh, we only write goodwill down. We don't write it up. And writing it down once is no guarantee that we won't have to do it again sometime later. Uh, internationally, the rules are very similar. Um, and goodwill is, as far as I know, the one asset um, internationally that they mark down, but they never mark back up. So they follow us in this one particular area. Most other things, they mark down and then back up. If they, the value goes back up. All right, let's do an example. We've got 10 minutes, plenty of time to do this example. <laughs> At the time of the annual impairment test, company A has a reporting unit with a book value of 125 million, including goodwill of 25 million. In other words, they have all the assets of this firm and they include uh, inventory and accounts receivable and private equipment and land 
Uh, and goodwill, it's some intangible assets. And then they have some liabilities. And, and they take all these assets and they subtract all the liabilities. And the book value is 125. The fair market value of the reporting unit has been determined to be 100 million. In other words, if we took this company that we had previously purchased and we resold it to somebody, we think we can get 100 million out of it. That's how much we think we can sell it for. That's the fair market value of the reporting unit. The company determines that the net fair value of the reporting unit assets and liabilities is 85 million. This is, if we don't sell the whole company to somebody else, we get 100 million. If we just sell off the individual assets to whoever and then pay off the liabilities, we have 85 million. That's, that's the fair value of the net assets. Those are the words that the standard uses. Fair value of net assets. All right, so we're going to do our goodwill impairment test. Step number one. Step number one, we want to compare the book value to the fair value. Okay, Our book value of the reporting unit is 125, and the fair value of the reporting unit is 100. If the book value is greater than the fair value, which it is, then we go to step two. We don't know for sure if there's going to be an impairment, but we have to go to step number two to determine if, if there is. If the book value is less than the fair value, you're done. You don't do anything else. There's no impairments if that's the case. Step number two. Step number two, we need to compare the implied value of goodwill to the book value of goodwill. We, we know the book value of goodwill is 25. That's our book value of goodwill. That's the asset we have on our books as goodwill is 25. We're trying to determine if that's too big. That's the purpose of what we're doing here. And so to get the implied value of goodwill, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to take the fair value of the segment, which is 100 million, and we're going to subtract the fair value of the net assets. You can write that out more. You might want to write the whole words. The fair value of the reporting unit is 100. The fair value of the net assets is 85. And we get 15. What is that 15? This is the implied value of goodwill. In other words, if we sell the entire segment, we think someone's going to pay us 100 million. If we sell off all the individual assets and pay off the liabilities, we'll only get 85. So if we sell the entire segment, they're getting something else worth 15 million dollars. And it's all those things we listed previously. Great management team, good supply chain, good ideas, whatever. All that stuff. And so that's what that $15 million is describing. It's the implied value of goodwill. So now we're going to take the book value of goodwill, which is 25. We're going to subtract the implied value. Fifteen, and we're going to get impairment oops, of ten. Or in other words, our book value of our goodwill is currently twenty-five. We're going to mark it down to fifteen. So we're going to have a loss of ten, and I'll go to the journal entry over here. We're going to have a loss of ten, and goodwill is going to be decreased by 10. So that the implied value of goodwill is now the book value of goodwill. Any questions on that? Anybody's brains a little bit fried? Mm -hmm. a quiz, two solutions to a quiz, type of the exam, and then a bunch of information, and it's 9.45 at night. Alright, example number two. Redo example number one, assuming that the reporting unit has a book value of 95. All right, step one, book value 95, fair value 100. <coughs> no one <heard. coughs> Okay, 
So just so you're aware, there's also the possibility of going to step number one and saying go to step number two and then finding out that the implied value of goodwill is bigger than the book value of goodwill and you still have no impairment. So you can go to step number two and still not have an impairment. We can do an example of that here, but that is a possibility as well. So keep that in mind. All right, any questions about any of the material we covered tonight? about five minutes, if you don't have any questions, I will, I will just bring up, um, I will talk a little bit about the exam and what you should focus, and I guess I'll, I'll tell you what students miss most on this exam. Any questions? Yeah, fair market value of the reporting unit, uh, that was determined to be $100 Correct. Right. That's excluding the and book value of the goodwill. It includes the value of the goodwill. It's not a book value. It's just oh, if okay. we sold so the whole the thing. Whole. That's the whole. Yeah. Okay, if we yeah. sold the whole company to somebody else, how much would we get? That's what that number is. And the fair value of just the net assets excludes the value of goodwill because you're not selling that. You're just selling off the individual pieces. That's the idea. All right. Since I zoomed through those last things, we have a couple minutes um, that I will talk about a couple.